Have no fear. Super mom is here. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about my labor and delivery experience. I gave birth at 37 weeks. I went in for my appointment that day. It was October the 13th. 12th, 13th. And I went in for my appointment to do what we call, what I call, the big ultrasound where we the baby is progressing and his weight and to to see how he's looking at 37 weeks you know in more detail also to check the amniotic fluid and everything so I was super excited. Oh. This is the top of the baby's head and You have big babies? Uh, this is my first. Okay. <laughs> Were y'all big babies, do you know? I was about seven. I think he was about seven. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah. We'll get away this baby today, too. Okay. okay. So. Mm -hmm. Baby's kind of a little arm up over its head, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> do I know what it is? Because I know it was a boy. Secret. Yeah, it's a boy. Okay. <laughs> y'all have fun with your gender reveal? We did. There's the thigh bone right here. Trying to roll over, and <laughs> they can't get over. <laughs> trying hard, they. So we went in and we, uh, the uh, ultrasound technician, she said everything was fine. So we were so excited, you know, only about three more weeks, you know, give or take. She went in to see my OBGYN and she told us that the amniotic fluid was low, lower than she wanted, and also throughout the course of my pregnancy, my blood pressure was high, but it wasn't high enough for concern, but it was pretty high. So she said that she thought it was best for us to go in and for me to be induced that night. So I was very shocked. This is my first pregnancy and I, I didn't know what to expect so to be induced was not part of my plan what I wanted to do so anyway we got prepared to be induced that night went in you go in and 
you know, they hook you up to the monitors and everything, the heart rate monitor and, you know, um, another monitor for baby's movement. So, um, I did that and then you get in your gown, everything off. <laughs> And what they did for me, I know a lot of ways they can induce labor, but what they did for me was they used a pill called Cytotec. So the Cytotec is a little pill that they put in your cervix. They actually put it in your cervix. So that was an experience. <laughs> so they put it in your cervix and it's supposed to help with effacing and dilating quick tip if you have not seen a birthing video or been to a birthing class I do recommend going to either a birthing class either virtually or in person if you want to but um just or seeing one or looking for one on the internet we looked at one online it's so helpful it's a lot of things you just don't know and watching the birthing video really helped us prepare mentally for a lot of things so I do recommend watching a birthing video I will link the birthing video that we watched on YouTube in the description box anywho so cytotech put that in the cervix and um, the nurse put that in the cervix so you have to lay on your side in order for it to kind of take effect so I'm laying on my side and you know when you're pregnant your joints are very loose and there's a lot of pain for me I had a whole bunch of hip pain just that was to me it was worse than the contractions because with that I was getting also Pitocin which helps which is an artificial hormone of oxytocin that produces that produces contractions so I was on Pitocin and they did the side attack so I was having contractions and doing all of that that was more painful the hip pain was more painful <laughs> than all of that so anywho she came back and checked me after I want to say a couple of hours she came back and checked I wasn't effacing and I wasn't dilating or anything so they told me to just wait until the next morning to see what my doctor would say my doctor came in she checked me out and mind you they're checking my blood pressure too because it is high I, at this point I am starting to get preeclampsia which is high blood pressure during pregnancy I had swollen hands and feet I didn't have any protein in my urine but I did have the swollen hands and feet associated with preeclampsia the so, doctor comes in and she checks me nothing's happened so she suggests either I opt for the c-section or I go ahead and start that induction process again with the cytotec and with the pitocin they're gonna up the pitocin so I decided to go ahead and do a second round of induction just you know just to try and see About to pop, ready to pop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ready. ready for Let's see what your mama had to do for you, Benjamin. Mm -hmm. All for you, because I love you <laughs> so much. <laughs> so we did the second round, nothing changed. Well, just like a little bit, but nothing significant enough for it to, you know, for me to go through labor and uh, go ahead and deliver the baby. Thankfully, the baby was not in distress or anything. He was doing fine. He he was very comfortable in there. <laughs> so that was a good, good thing. But my blood pressure just would not go down. And my doctor was, she did not want to risk me or the baby having any complications with my blood pressure and the amniotic fluid being low as it was prior to so she suggested c-section so it's your choice ladies is your choice whether or not you want to do the c-section or not you know it is just up to you so my husband and I we talked about it we prayed about it and 
we went ahead and did the c-section this is my first baby and i have a c-section <laughs> did not want a c-section okay so when i talk about my hospital bag in my previous video you you know you plan for either or you have to be realistic and that's what i was talking about with the birthing video you have to be realistic you know you just never know what happens so be prepared mentally um for both so i was prepared for the c-section i just didn't want it um so prepared mentally a little bit <laughs> but i was still nervous I was still nervous about the whole situation because being cut up and being, you know, having to uh, have an epidural, all these things were very new to me. The same morning that she suggested the C-section, they got everything ready. They were just on it. Everything happened so fast. And that's probably for the best because my nerves were getting the best of me. <laughs> so everything happened so fast. The nurse was, was going through all the precautions and she was going through um all the medications they were pumping into me i did have an IV on when i first got to the hospital because they were trying to keep me hydrated you know because i couldn't drink anything so she was going through all the medications and the anesthesiologist came in he also you know informed me of everything they were very informative and so that was really nice to know what was going on you know or what was going to happen so got into the operating room. They don't roll you in there. I just literally walked <laughs> across the hall or across out of my room into this other room. And there was the operating room. You sit on the table. You have to bend your back. <laughs> it took them three times to do the epidural because I just could not get the posture correctly. So anyway, they put the epidural in your bag. They said it feels like bees stinging it really does and that's not a good thing so it was very uncomfortable um a little pain but not uh excruciatingly painful i i could take it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, so uh, they did that and then once the needle went in successfully i felt a jolt down my left leg and i was like oh he was like what happened the anesthesiologist was like, what happened? And I said, I felt the joke on my left leg. He's like, good. And then they like, lay down. Lay, lay, so they lay me down really fast. Everything's tingling. Everything is numbing. Every, you know, from um, my chest down, everything is just going numb. And then they pulled the curtain and they're perping everything. And everything's just going so fast. I'm feeling nauseated. I'm feeling really, really cold. And so the anesthesiologist told me to tell them if I felt really cold or nauseous. So I did. And they did something with the medicine. And I felt better instantaneously. So as they're prepping me, I'm on the table. My arms are out like this. They didn't tie me down. But they did put an oxygen mask on, um, on me. So I'm just waiting and then my doctor comes in she has another doctor to help her and they I, I felt like I felt her cut me open like just cut and I was like oh my goodness you know you just feel the sensation don't feel the pain obviously but you feel the sensation so they did that and I was like where's my husband where's my husband and they're like he's coming he's coming so he comes in and literally as he comes in they're literally pulling the baby out <laughs> I can hear him cry and it was such a um, just such a relieving moment because he was 37 weeks at 37 weeks the lungs aren't fully developed so my doctor was telling me at the appointment that there could be a possibility that he wouldn't have developed lungs so to hear him cry was the greatest moment because I knew those lungs were developed <laughs> and I'll insert the clip of him coming out and screaming. It was such a, a blessing, such a miracle that that happened. And you know, um, the afterwards, you know, they're sewing me up, and I get rolled back to the room. And I also have a catheter, so you will have a catheter as well when you uh, have the epidural. Anyway, got to spend that really uh that golden hour the best part that was also another beautiful thing out of all the pain <laughs> and all the nervousness 
something really beautiful came out of it. I spent about five days in the hospital, of course, for recovery. Um, they did give me some pain medicine for the pain. I suggest take it. Me, silly. I don't know what I was thinking. I did not take it right away. I wouldn't take it right away because c second is not a joke, okay? So, <laughs> take it as prescribed um, because it really helps you and helps your baby. Um, when I went home, of course, it took me about six weeks it took me about five weeks to recover the recovering time is about six weeks but after five weeks I was feeling really good feeling better you know able to do more things around the house I think that was the the kicker too you just can't do anything once you come home from the hospital you can't do anything but lift your baby you can't drive you can't you know uh, take a bath you have to take showers you can't pick up any trash, you can't wash dishes, which is probably a good thing, but you <laughs> can't do anything. Thankful for my husband and my mother-in-law, all those who helped out. If people want to help you during this time, let them help. It's, you really, you can probably do it, but you shouldn't. Let them help. They love you. They love the baby. Let them help you out during this time. You really need it. You really deserve it. And, uh, that's my labor and delivery story. I would insert some videos of these precious moment, uh, moments. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you enjoy your moment. And that's why I wear this shirt. Because we are super. <laughs> Moms are super. I never knew just the, the sacrifices and how much mothers go through until I gave birth myself and you just never know you just never know until you go through it yourself it's such a amazing process it just changes you for life and um, I'm so proud to be a mother and to be a super mom at that thank you for listening to my labor and delivery story uh, like I said, I'll insert some clips in for you to enjoy. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Comment about, you know, your birth story or, or anything. Anything inspiring, encouraging to other mothers as well. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Wait. All right. Wait. Back up, Dad. Yeah. Look, Mom. Benjamin, Benjamin. 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 Benjamin.